What up, guys? James from Bolt Bros here. The season is finally here. We are excited. Week one is finally here. Only a couple days away from week one versus the Raiders. FTR all day, every day, once again, guys. But I did want to talk a little bit about the reality of the 2024 season and what this season could mean for the Chargers, kind of what the outlook looks like as of right now. And let's talk about the good, bad, and the ugly for the 2024 season. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it, guys. Bolt Bros, let's go. Bolt Bros. Once again, guys, appreciate all the love and support too. We are finally here after week one and all those that have supported us throughout the whole time in the off season and everything. We appreciate all your support. And once again, like this video, subscribe to this channel. If you've not, we will constantly keep you updated about charter subjects all throughout the season with lives every Saturday and Sunday, basically even to pregame to postgame type situation. So love to be able to have you guys enjoying the Bolt Bros here. So once again, let's talk about the good, bad, and the ugly for 2024 season. There's a lot of ways that we could take this and a lot of directions that we could take about it. So let's start a little bit with the good at this point. And uh, you know, for everybody, when this man came on board, Everybody was excited. Now, having Jim Harbaugh here is absolutely the good of this team. Having a guy that knows what the heck he's doing as a head coach and to be able to really, truly unlock Justin Herbert here. Like, once again, for both of these guys being together, an ex-quarterback with Jim Harbaugh, an ex-charger on top of that, with having a quarterback like Justin Herbert, you would think, man, we're going to light it up, guys. This is going to be phenomenal to watch. And I think that we have a great chance and a very good chance that we could actually be very good this year with Jim Harbaugh. Once again, he's a winner. He's a guy that wants to win. He's a guy that will want to will this team one way or another to win. I mean, what's his whole mantra? Competitors welcome. He wants guys here to compete. He wants guys here to be able to play their butts off and make sure that they go out there and put their best effort every single game. And it really seems like all the players were really bought in. I mean, once Jim Harbaugh came in here, even some of the rumors before that, people bumping into Tuli Tu Pelotu at, at a Costco, there is talks about how much they want Jim Harbaugh to be there. I mean, Dayon Hanley even talked about it, that they wanted Jim Harbaugh to be there. You know what? They found a way and made it happen. And on top of that, not just with Jim Harbaugh, we have a phenomenal staff around the entire team. We got Greg Roman. We got Joe Ortiz as a GM who has been highly toted throughout the league for a very long time. He wanted the right situation to go away from the Ravens, and he found the great situation with another Harbaugh, with Jim Harbaugh here in Los Angeles. So very, very much something to be able to lean on as something very good with this team. And I'm going to definitely say this is going to be exciting. Now, the one thing, and I'm going to put as a negative perspective, we really don't know exactly what to expect with Jim Harbaugh for season one, for 2024. There's a lot of things out there that could be a little bit negative to it, to this team. Um, I mean, obviously, even to say the things that have happened with him with Michigan, maybe there's some of that that could be a little bit of an issue in his head, too. But I think he's really moved on. He's locked in with the Chargers. My hopes is that we have a very good season with Jim Harbaugh in year one. So, Love to see it. Now, <laughs> the bad. Let's talk about the bad. I hate even talking about it, guys. It really even bothers me even to talk about it. But once again, we want to be a realistic channel here, too. The bad. Position groups. It gets a little dicey here, guys. Now, this is from the 33rd team wide receiver room power rankings and putting us at 32 in the league. Yikes. That's pretty harsh. Um Ian Valentino has basically put us at the 32 worst wide receiver groups in the NFL. Now, even ESPN even put us at one of the worst in the league, too. Now, I think it's slightly subjective, but at the same side, I'm trying to look at this in, in, in kind of a negative condensation. Yes, we do not have Keenan Allen. We do not have Mike Williams. We still got Josh Palmer. We obviously got Lad McConkey. We got DJ Shark. You got Quentin Johnston, who... Did not perform very well to be able to say he's like the first round pick guy. You'd hope that he's going to have a, a nice leap for us this year. 
we will see. Darius Davis. I mean, guys that we don't necessarily have a whole heck of a lot on film outside of maybe Josh Palmer and DJ Chark. That's about it. We don't really have a guy that could be that guy when we need him to make a play. And that's my biggest, biggest concern with this team is that we don't have that guy in the wide receiver group. When there's a critical third down type situation or fourth down situation, who's the guy that Justin Herbert's going to lean on at that point? I don't know. And that's my whole concern about this team. And that's what my biggest concern of starting this season is who's going to be that clutch guy. I would like to say Josh Palmer could be that guy because he's been with Justin Herbert for a while. I would like to be able to see a leap from Quentin Johnston. That would be great to be able to see. DJ Sharks got great body control, good hands. He has the ability to run routes, but there is so much unknown in this team. Not having those guys like Keenan Allen and Mike Williams to be able to lean on, it's getting kind of tougher in that situation, in the tough situations of trying to close a game out or to make that critical play to continue a game or continue a drive. That's the one thing that my biggest concern is. So there is a fair amount of bad to that element. Now, just to even take it one step further here, this is from NFL too. They talked a lot about base guard wide receivers and Lad McConkey essentially being a downgrade to Keenan Allen, DJ Shark, and Mike Williams being a push. And I'm going to add a little bit of the tight ends to this group too, Will Disley uh, and Hayden Hurst, essentially being a downgrade. Now, Gerald Everett was very much an effort guy. I don't think he was the best of blocker or anything like that. It's just we're going in a different idea of what Jim Harbaugh wants, physicality, Guys that are big body type guys, 260 type tight ends, guys that could know how to block. I mean, that's kind of the reason why we got rid of Donald Parham, more or less. You moved on from something that's completely different. Gerald Everett was a guy that could get you five to 600 yards a season. Will Disley is not really known as a pass catcher in a sense, a very good blocker. Hayden Hurst has had some great seasons, and you'd hope that he'd be able to find his way to be able to be a top tier type tight end at least a very serviceable tight end and then with lad mcconkey and keenan allen i think they're almost very similar in a sense we just know he's just young on top of that there's a fair amount of injuries that he's had in his in his career same thing for dj shark and then even just to go with one more position group the gus edwards to austin eckler is being a push i think that's a little subjective in my opinion still i think that jk uh dobbins and gus edwards equate to basically two very solid backs to be able to be better than Austin Eckler in some sense. So that is a fair amount of bad for this team. There's a lot of things here. Now you would hope that Justin Herbert will be that guy that just elevates everybody. And that's my thoughts of what's going to happen. I think once again, Harbaugh gets the best out of their players. And I do feel very strongly he will get the best out of the players. So that's what I think is the bad of this team. Positional type placement of players a lot of one-year contracts, a lot of guys that have been injured in the past too. You hope that they find ways to stay healthy. Once again, just as an X factor, Ben Herbert basically would be kind of hopefully that guy that could keep these guys in line and make sure they're healthy so they don't go out of the season early on or anything. But there is a lot of bad and a lot of skepticism in my opinion and a little bit, I know as Charger fans, we always think we're going to be great, but that's being biased. That's being a fan. So once again, that is the bad of this team. Positional players on the offensive side, it could get a little dicey there. Now, moving on to the ugly. Oh, I hate this subject. I hate this subject so much. Um, and I hate to be able to even talk about the ugly and what this ugly part is here. And, you know, as a Chargers fan, we've seen a lot of ugly games, right? We've seen a lot of ugly games. And we've found even the term charging being just an absolute true thing with this team quite too often. And sometimes it's even just within games that are just standard games during the year, um, finding ways to basically shoot yourself in the foot, find your ways to be able to, to not find a way to close a dang game out. Now, once again, we've seen it too often. I mean, even going back to say the 2006, 14 and two season, we end up uh, getting Marlon McCree gets a pick late in the game versus the Packers, fumbles the ball, gives the ball back to the Pack, or excuse me, to the Patriots. The Patriots end up getting the ball back. Tom Brady does Tom Brady magic stuff and finds ways to to take us out. You know the Philip Rivers game where he blows blows out his knee, and then the next week, kind of for the AFC Championship game, Philip Rivers still goes out there with two blown out knees, and you know once again he's an absolute rock star going out there. But once again, we get injuries at the wrong time. 
and we get situations that make it harder for us to win. And it's just a tough thing. We got to find a way to get past that. And I mean, I remember seeing some internal um, documents within the Chargers talking about how they want to kind of change the term chargering to not finding ways to lose and basically shooting ourselves in the foot and doing stupid things at the wrong time. But chargering as in we are basically going to dominate the team. We're going to dominate the team in front of us, make it more of a positive light of things. And once again, you hope that's what's going to happen. Now, even to say this picture, this is the picture after the Jaguars playoff game. Now, that was one that I don't think this team recovered from. I mean, go back to the beginning of 2023, Brandon Staley talking very heavily about it. Hey, we're getting past it. We're past it. We're past it. We're past it. It just seemed like it lingered. And there's a lot of stories that come out of that game where there was just a lot of, you know, discontent, uh, a lot of pointing fingers within that game that basically changed the momentum of that game. That was an ugly, ugly game. And that was an absolute pure form of what chargering was. And it's a not a good feeling. Now, as a positive, if I'm going to spin any positive to this at this point, Jim Harbaugh is one of those guys that finds ways to win. I, I, I've actually looked at a lot of the Niners games back in 2011, 2012, and there was a lot of games where they were down two scores pretty early on, and they found ways to crawl their way back into the games. A lot of past Chargers teams had a very hard time way to be able to, to get them back into the game. And you would hope that maybe there's a turn here of going after a head coach that knows what he's doing versus, you know, Anthony Lynn to Brandon Staley to a lot of these first year type head coaches. I mean, even to say that whole North Turner era, which, you know, in my opinion, was probably one of the better eras that we've had outside of the Marty era, which a lot of people talk about. I mean, North Turner did get us to an AFC championship game, guys. And that's the first time we've been to an AFC championship game in a long time since Super Bowl, basically. Uh, so 94. So my hopes is that Jim Harbaugh is basically going to make this team turn the corner a little bit. The whole idea of chargering basically being more of a physicality type thing. We're going to outmuscle them. They have talked a lot about being bullies on this team. That's one thing you would hope that's the corner there. Well, actually turning the corner a little bit or turning the page on the chargering and making it more as you fear us to play us kind of thing. And my hopes is that that happens. And I really hope to not see much chargering by any means anymore, finding ways to close games out. And I mean, as Chargers fans, we always talk about it. We always get heart palpitations. We get all these, you know, high, high blood pressure situations here. And we hope that chargering ends. And that is absolutely the ugly side of the Chargers. And we need to find a way to basically end that as a team. And I don't like to be able to talk too much about the negativity of the charges, but there's a lot of reality to that guys. And I really hope that by all means, the ugly side of the chargers of charger ring is over with. Let's just be a bully of a team, which we've chatted quite a bit about. And this team has basically tried to focus on out physicality team, find ways to close games out, play a balanced offense, play solid defense as just one quick positive, just because I'm positive James over here. I would say that, the last preseason game, there was three turnovers the Chargers ended up getting on defense to basically close the game out. That's a positive, guys. It's showing that there is a little bit of a change here, guys. So I really hope that the Chargering is over with and we can now be that physical bowling, Chargering team to out-physical and beat up teams when they come and play us. So love to be able to see that. I know Joey Bosa talked about that, just kind of changing kind of the momentum of this team changing the idea of this team, changing the identity of this team. So let's hope that's going to happen. So once again, that is my good, bad, and ugly. We will be doing a video also on the good, better, and best to continue talking about into week one, the game versus the Raiders this week. So once again, guys, I want to hear from you guys. What's your thoughts? Is there anything I've missed on the good, bad, and the ugly for the Chargers for 2024? Love to be able to hear from you. Throw in the comments below. Once again, James from Bolt Bros. Let's go. Hey, what's up? Cameron Dick here watching Bolt Bros Podcast. Let's go. Charge up, Bolt Bros on the night. LA Thunder in electric delight.